Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. It is Monday, April 8th, 2024, and I still have my solar glasses on because of the eclipse, right? I can't see anything. <laughs> can't see a thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Um, have a little fun there. You know, uh, there was a, a whole lot of talk about the eclipse and... Um, <laughs> all the conspiracy theorists saying that we're going to have earthquakes and tornadoes and um, just an apocalypse is going to happen, you know, because it doesn't, we don't have a solar eclipse every day, obviously, but we have them. They're all over the world. It's not just here in the United States. There are eclipses that happen around the world throughout the year. And, you know, just, it's just nice to have such an experience, but it's just some of the ideas that people come up with that we're all going to die. <laughs> it's, it's been happening for a long, long, long time. And, you know, uh, but people, you know, they want to have, they want to have people click on their links and, and uh, make comments and all that stuff and make you think, Oh gosh, the world is going to end. What do I do? Get bread and milk and all that stuff. Right. So just have a little fun with it. But as we all know, nothing happened. Normal celestial event happens all the, you know, not all the time, but frequently. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. I hope everybody had a good week. Uh, if you're new to my live stream, we um, tend to focus on classic cars. And I say classic, meaning in my mind, uh, mid fifties up until late seventies. That's kind of where uh, I think my expertise is. Um, if you don't already know, obviously I make videos on YouTube all the time and my background is, I feel pretty extensive. My dad had a junkyard growing up and so I've been around cars literally my entire life. Um, no way around that. Uh, me and my brother worked at the junkyard for my dad and I learned a lot of things through that process. Uh, I'm also an aircraft mechanic, licensed A&P mechanic. I've done sheet metal work for on airplanes for about 30 years. I'm not doing that anymore, though. I'm just doing the stuff here in my garage. And I also co-owned a body shop for seven years. So I have background in the collision industry. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff that I've, I have in my back pocket as far as knowledge. So if you are interested in uh, joining our conversation, fantastic. If you want to ask a question, even better. If you want to bring up a subject, and it could be a variety of things. Sometimes we go off on tangents and we talk about cars and movies. Um, we've gone on food <laughs> angles. <laughs> but, you know, it's all good. We're here to have uh, a good conversation and uh, hopefully share some information if we can. And if not, well, you can just listen to me ramble on for an hour or so. Typically, that's my um, my timeline is an hour, hour and a half. And uh, I, we have a great group of people that show up. So if you have a question or whatever, by all means, ask it. If I can't answer that question, there's a group over there in the chat box and they have a lot of knowledge as well. And they like to share what they know. So welcome to the chat. Now, I'd like to go through who's here and talk about some things. So first in is Rick Gain. He gets a bell. You also get a bell. It's kind of, you know, a little reward system I offer. Uh, he says, family issues tonight, won't be able to make the stream live. We'll watch it on replay and get annoyed not being able to respond. Hope everybody has a good night. Thank you, Rick. I know you're going through um, several things, and I hope I hope things resolve for you at some point. Rick Stevenson checking in. Glad you're here, Rick. And Rick is my signal to get my first sip of coffee. Thanks to Rick. There we go. Terry Keithley. Checking in. Hello, all. And Barry, spring is really here. Please hit a like, like and thumbs up for Barry. Thank you kindly. Yes, thank you, Terry. Uh, Terry, and I've sent you some emails um, yeah, with with Patreon. Just to, I, I haven't gotten any response back, so I just want to bring that up to you. Um, also, one of my – I had this, this cat tell me that it's – is it your wife's birthday today? Is it Betty's birthday? Is that right? My cat whisperer told me that it was your, your Betty's birthday. So, happy birthday. To Betty as well. <laughs> Glad you're both here. Crash Rider, the view, the view of the eclipse 
here in Southern Indiana today was amazing, but not as amazing as watching the Duke of Georgia, <laughs> aka Joe Daddy, resurrect a bucket of rust known as Slither into a classic car. <laughs> Thank you, Crash Rider. <laughs> and be sure to hit the like and thumbs up. Yes. Dave Tyson checking in. First Dave sighting. Good evening, all. Evening, Dave. Glad you're here. Well, that was a good bell. Colin. Hey, gang and Barry. 60 degrees here. 60 degree day in upstate New York. Working on my wiring and sound deadening. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Yes. Glad to hear, Colin. It was a good weekend. And the weather, of course, with the eclipse, the weather was weird. We all know that. Um... We, my wife was out in the driveway watching what we could see in Georgia, and of course, Georgia. The it's hard to depict it. I don't have I don't have anything obvious here um, that acts as the the round of <laughs> anyway. So it was it was covering like that much that much we got of the uh, of the eclipse. So. Um, it was so good, but even with that, the temperatures dropped, you know, and I don't know what, I forget what they tell us, how long it would be like if the sun burned out, how long we would, it would take for us to know that the sun burned out, you know, cause it's the light is traveling all those whatever millions of miles. Um, but I, I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> I don't want to be around when the sun quits working. <laughs> Troy Justin. Happy Eclipse Day. I hope everyone had a better week than me and Barry. My back went out on me. Also, old age sucks. Yes. Yeah. I did not have a good, uh, good this past week. I was out of commission pretty much Tuesday and Wednesday, popping Advil, stretching everything I could. And um, I'm probably about 90% right now. Not 100, but I'm feeling much better than I was. So that's that's good. Roger, hindsight, 6-7, checking in from next door. Glad you Raj. Rusty's restoration. Hello all from the Eclipse Zone of Southern Indiana. Thumbs up all. Glad you Russ. Steve Grimes, checking in. Good evening, gang. Good evening, Steve. And Rusty says, uh, hello all, might miss the beginning. Oh, wait, that's Rusty's Mustang Garage. That's a different than Rusty's restoration. Hello, all might miss the beginning, but we'll try to catch up towards the end. All right. Awesome. So we have two Rusties. <laughs> and Steve Grimes, another one checking in. Same same Steve. Sorry. Good evening, gang. Hopefully everyone survived the eclipse. Thanks, Barry, for the discount on the Arc Captain plasma cutter. Awesome. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you for buying it. Jerry checking in from the Money Pit. In Middle Tennessee, happy solar eclipse with full clouds. Thumbs up for Barry, yeah. We actually had a good view. The sun was, there was really no clouds in the sky and, um, you know, but it was good. It was entertaining. Uh, Robert, evening all, had a good view of the eclipse today and got a few pics to come out. Oh, good. I know whenever I did a, um, a the last eclipse, I think I made a video of it. And I probably posted it on my workshop channel. I think it was 2017 or something. And so that was, that was fun. I have a friend who is a, um, he's retired, but he has uh, gone to school for photography. Or, I mean, he has skills in photography. And he has created some incredible photo sets. Not the one that I used in my depiction here, my thumbnail, but he has some fantastic photos of a sequence of the solar eclipse, the last one, and just just amazing to see and, and uh, uh, would make perfect poster material or something you don't want to hang on the wall. So Jerry's checking in. Howdy, Barry. Howdy, y'all. I hope you all had a wonderful day. The eclipse was truly awe-inspiring for Robert and me. I am glad to have experienced it. Have a great stream. And... Oh, I also got to run for the ice cream truck today as well. <laughs> well, there you go. If you got to go get ice cream and watch the eclipse, that's that you can't ask for anything better than that. Dave Conville checking in. Good evening. Evening, Dave. Don, Don's manufacturer. Hello, all from hello from Soggy PDX. Currently at the store. We'll join after a bit. Okay. Well, I'll give you a bell anyway. 
Bob Shoemaker, good evening all. Eclipse pretty much made for a fruitless day. All's well, we survived. Good. Yeah, it was, I mean, I, <laughs> I took advantage of the sun being out, let's say, um, and while my wife was watching it and our dog was sitting with her, I washed her van for her, you know, just kind of casually was watching the eclipse occasionally and, and then washed her van for her. And my theory is that I, I the next eclipse will pro probably be the next time I wash her van. So just if you wanted to schedule something like that, you know, try to plan for an event that you know is coming. Maybe a while. <laughs> Uh, Shannon Vaughn is checking in. Hello, everyone. Hello, Shannon. Glad you're here. Jeffrey Dewar. Good evening. Good evening, Jeffrey. That looks like a new name. I don't think I've seen that one before. I, I imagine you get a lot of uh, comments. Are you a doer? Yeah, I'm a doer. Tom Jones. Good evening, everyone. You know what? It's funny you mentioned that. <laughs> um because we all know there's a musical artist named Tom Jones. And uh, oddly enough, I watched the movie last night and I'm not trying to get off tangent, but I watched the movie last night. It was uh, Mars attacks made in 1996. And I was surprised at the number of high level actors that were in that movie. And Tom Jones was in that movie and he had some action scenes with it. So it was, it was kind of fun uh, to watch that. Let me get that camera a little bit higher to watch that and see Tom Jones. Um, I think he was trying to fly. He flew an airplane out of the hangar or something. But anyway, glad you're here. The Dutchman's Wood Shack. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, I'm the dude with the sick Mustang. It was great here. And we had clear skies and... I got pretty much most of it. Okay. Well, there's, there's, um, there's several, several, uh, people with sick, sick Mustangs. Now sick can mean sickly like poor or sick, like, Whoa, that's a sick car. So you have to kind of clarify a little bit, but I'm glad you're here. Uh, Terry Keith, the Barry, the emails have not gotten to me. Okay. Well, I sent one in response to your, um, you, one you had sent me with, however that was figured in. And then I sent one to Betty as well. So just, just let you know. The Dutchman, I have a bad hip. Oh, yeah, that's, that's never good. That's never good. Steve Reed. Hello, Joe daddy and everyone and watch the eclipse today. The one we had seven years ago was much better. I agree. You know, what are you going to do? <laughs> They should do. They should make better uh, adjustments so everybody can see that eclipse. <laughs> you know, whenever I have, I've actually had conversations with people, and I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I had um, a former coworker tell me that the sun burned out a long time ago, and that it is actually a grid of LED lights. Yeah. Yeah, he told me that. And I said, well, if that's the case, why can't we see that? And he said, chemtrails. Chemtrails are blocking what you can see. And of course, there's people that say the moon is a hologram. It doesn't even exist. So let's not go out there. <laughs> <laughs> Jeffrey, it takes a little over eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to the earth. There you go. Well, thank you for that. So we would we wouldn't know for eight minutes that the sun had burned out, and I I don't want to be there when it does. C J Hoyt, what eclipse? Nothing here in Shelton, Washington. Just rain. How's the back? The back is better, not one hundred percent, but better. Yeah, you can probably see videos of the eclipse online. I'm sure people post it. Tom Jones says awesome movie. Well, you did a good job in that one. <laughs> The blue jumpsuit is amazing. Michael Pagliarini, evening all. Has anyone tried black oxide on small parts, nuts, and bolts? Good question. I have not. If anybody has an answer, by all means. Clark Clifford, I was thinking, it's not unusual to be loved by anyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> hey, Clark. 
<laughs> Richard Vogel, good evening, Barry. It's my turn for back spasms. Oh, well, yeah, I don't I know. No, thanks. I don't want those either. Um, Troy Justin, LED lights powered by solar panels with not sun. It makes sense to him. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was dead serious. He was dead serious. He'd watched the video. He saw a video, and that's what that's what it is. The sun is, isn't there anymore. It quit. It, <laughs> and NASA built this giant grid of LED lights. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> but you know, there are people who think such things. There are people that think such things. There. Um, we could really go off the deep end and, and step off the edge of the flat earth thing and really make a mess of things, but we're not going to, we're not going to. So, um, you know, in the last video, I, I did get some work done on the car and, you know, grinding and welding. It, it's, it wasn't the most exciting video, but what else are you going to do? I tried to show some of the stuff I did, some of the welding, some of the grinding and uh, points of interest like materials. You know, I mentioned about these being back here. Charles has supplied me with a good bit of uh, paint products. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just a matter of applying everything. And I will say it's not the most exciting thing when it comes down to it. If I'm cutting something apart and welding it back together and, and fitting panels, that's exciting. That, that gives me a lot of satisfaction. What I'm doing right now is just kind of like, hmm, okay, well, I got to do it. So I might as well just do it, even if I'm not in a great big hurry to do it. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It just uh, just has to be done. So, um, oh, also, uh, there are some parts coming for all the suspension pieces, the steering, um, and the rear the shackles for the leaf springs uh all that stuff is coming uh through an order that was put in uh to kentucky mustang and so that'll be coming tomorrow and that's good that'll help me get everything together um as far as the suspension when i get to that point now i still have to take apart the spindles and make a decision on the coil springs because I don't know the, I haven't really looked at them that hard to see what the condition is. I would like to be able to put everything together from spindles, uh, control arms, coil springs, have all that stuff done and put together. And then later on, somebody else can address the rotors and the calipers, brake lines and all that sort of thing. Cause I, I really don't want to do any of that. Now, the other thing I have to look at is the rear axle. Uh, I do have shackles coming and bolts to put everything in place, but I don't, I don't, I don't really plan to clean everything up. It's just going to be put it together so it can roll. And again, the next person in line will be uh, have to pull that back out. So I won't make anything tight. It'll just be in place, and then they can pull it out and decide what they want to do with the differential and all that sort of thing. But that all those parts should be here tomorrow, and I'll have to set them aside, make room for them. You know how that is. Uh, it's pretty tight in here as it is, but I'll, I'll make room for those parts. Um, Clark, it takes eight minutes for the light to get to Earth, and boy, are its arms tired. Yes. <laughs> Brian B., hello all from North Idaho. Glad to hear, Brian. Whoops, Troy. Did you plumb for airlines in your garage or you just have a hose coming in? I'm thinking of doing it to my garage and was wondering what to use. Okay, I'm breaking all the rules with what I have. So if you'll if you'll see there's a white line over there that is PVC. Um I think it's I think it's half inch, schedule 40, and they tell you don't do that. Do not use PVC. So I'm telling you don't use PVC, even though I have PVC uh, running through my garage. If you look up, I don't know if you can see up there, I have a hose reel and PVC running to it as well. And then I have PVC running to the back of the shop. 
I'm not going to show you that. Comes back and goes down the back wall to the middle where it goes through the wall, joins another piece of PVC and provides air to the paint booth. So everybody says don't use PVC. And I get it. I, I've had one experience at the body shop where we had uh, PVC blow out. And that was a one inch line. Uh, the problem was whoever put it together didn't follow the procedures for gluing the PVC and the seam came apart. But that had been in that shop for 20 years or more. And the um, it, it slipped apart and just, I mean, it, it let loose. Uh, in fact, the PVC broke off and stuck in the wall. So it is, it can be deadly. I, it can be deadly. Now, this has been in here over 20 years, probably over 20 years. Um, yeah, it's, well, I built a shop in 96. So, ooh, 20, 20, maybe 28 years. <laughs> that that schedule 40 PVC has been doing its job. Uh, I do have everything kind of suspended. I don't have anything rigid. I let it kind of flex a little bit. And I have from the outside over here, I have my air compressor outside and I have a rubber hose coming through the wall and connecting to the, um, uh, the little water separator that I have in the front of the garage. So, I, I've had it in here for so long. I, I don't know that I, if you do it right, I think it's it's fine. Uh, but there's some people who don't use don't use PVC or don't want to use PVC, and I get that. I'm I'm going to leave probably leave this in here until it something ruptures, and then I'll start over. But that's what I have in place. So good question, Troy. Rick Gain. Drop in for a bit before the sun burns out. It will increase in size and envelop the earth in burner soil life. So don't worry about it burning out. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about it. Yep. That's going to happen way, way, way down the line. Betty Keithley. Thanks, Barry, for birthday wishes. 70 scares me. My kitty loves his mommy and vice versa. He is a big boy. Ryder Maverick, a.k.a. Boogie. Thanks, Again, and have a wonderful evening, Betty Keith. Yeah, well, thank you, Betty. And happy 70, 70th birthday. I'm guessing 70. Or you, you could be saying you're 69 and 70 scares you. But I'll assume it's 70. Um, so happy birthday. And I think we all get to that way. We all get to that point. Like, you reach a certain age, and you look, look at where you were 20, 30 years ago, whatever, or you look at your kids and, you know, I'm like, my oldest son is 32. How did that happen? But then I talked to my mom who is 80 this year. And she's like, I can't believe you're as old as you are. You know, it's, it's, it's that whole timeline thing. And in our minds, I think most of us don't recognize that we are that age until we start looking in the mirror and going, what, what happened? <laughs> I didn't look like this last year, <laughs> but it happens. Can't stop it. Uh, Faith Followers Customs Evening from East Alabama. Glad you're here, Faith Followers. Uh, what part of East Alabama? That's that's going to be the question for you. you ever get to Gadsden? Are you up in, Are you on the southern side of Alabama? Just let me know. Uh, Robert, I used PEX and made a circle around the shop with it. Cheap and easy to work with. Okay. That'll work. Thank you, Robert. Uh, CJ, what about PEX pipe for the airline? It's cheap. There we go. Bob Shoemaker, I have used three quarter inch schedule 40 PVC since 92 and no problems. Yeah. That's what I mean. That's where I'm at at this point. Uh, Troy, I won't use PVC, but I will look at getting PEX. Thanks, Robert. There you go. So, um, Clark Clifford, PVC, light the fuse and anticipate the carnage. Otherwise, perfect. Got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> it can fail. Yeah, it can. Dave Britton. Hello. Hello, Dave. Glad you're here. Dave Tyson. 
Age is a state of mind. Yeah, they say that. They say that. You know, um, I've said it before. I was mid forties and took up running again and I was doing good and running and, and all these things and competing in events and doing, um, Spartan races. I did a half marathon and whenever the pandemic, uh, hit us in 2020, I kind of just gave up on it. And even, uh, the doctors were looking at my ankles and stuff going like, you, you shouldn't be running. You're causing more damage than you need. So, uh, now I do, I just walk. I just walk, try to get two to three miles a day if I can. So, uh, Clark Clifford, more cowbell. Hello, Dave. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mark, uh, sorry, Michael Pagliarini, don't remind me, more gray than brown hair now. Yeah. Well, I, I could show you some pictures of me when I was early 20s. You wouldn't even look at that and go, that's him. No. Nope. Not even close. Faith followers west of Lagrange. Oh, okay. So you're more more in the southern, mid southern part of the state. Uh, Dave Britton, age of state of mind. You go to get up off the floor and find out how much it hurts to get up. Yes. Yeah, and now both my knees are popping. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a new feeling and a new sound that I don't like. You know, but I've said, and let me tell you, I'm going to tell you about this stuff because it works. And I've, I've tried to tell people this, and I know people that have ex experienced it, and it has worked for them as well. And look it up by all means. Look up golden raisins and gin. Just look it up. It's a way that you uh, soak golden raisins in gin and let it evaporate off, and you start taking those every day, and your arthritis problems decrease tremendously. I 100% I attest to that. It works. Look it up. Golden raisins and gin. In fact, it was on the um, uh, front page of, from what I understand, the American Arthritis Association had it as a uh, recipe for everybody on their website. And then they took it down because, well, there's no money to be made uh, in that nat so-called natural type of uh, remedies. So, um, but look it up. You'll see. And I've been, I've been doing that for the last six months or more. So, um, Dave Britton, I looked it up and have to try it. There's all kinds of great write-ups about it. Yes. And I, I'm, I'm telling you it works. I use it. Uh, I've had friends who, um, had their, their, their dad, this friend of mine, his dad was scheduled for knee surgery. He started doing it and he said, I don't need this surgery. And the doctor was like, what? And he's like, my knee quit hurting. And the doctors didn't, they did, didn't believe him. And he said, what are you, what have you been doing? And he told him, I've been using these, taking this you know, more natural remedy. And he's been walking two to three miles every day. And the guy was like, mm, over 80. And the doctor was like, well, okay, let us know whenever you want to do it. But tell me what that recipe is. And so he passed it on to the doctor, but look it up. Look it up. Okay. Um, but as I was saying, you know, working on the bottom of the car, um, trying to get all the little things taken care of. And I did some more. I, I was welding on it today and doing some more grinding and trying to get everything dressed up. Um, I do not plan to strip off all of the weld through primer. I know... Somebody had commented when I was showing the paint products, one of the main comments was that epoxy is meant for bare metal. And yes, it is. Um, but I also, I feel like there's no reason you can't spray epoxy on top of what's there if it's scuffed up and prepped. I don't, I don't see where it's going to make a difference. Epoxy will is meant to bond bare metal, but it's still going to adhere to what's there. So, and it would take a lot of effort to try to strip off everything on the bottom of that car, um, to, to bare metal. You'd have to blast it off. And I don't, I'm not going to do that. I'm just not, not in the, in the, in the setup for that. So, 
Um, but that's that'll be the plan. And I, I think there's a video. I think it, I'm pretty sure the guy's name is Jerry Heasley. Apparently, he's some sort of Mustang guru, and he did a um, kind of a it wasn't the best video. It was like somebody filmed him, and he was kind of addressing what he was doing. Um, but it gave some information as to how they applied the seam sealer that they did use and where they sprayed certain materials and stuff like that. Uh, I was kind of irritated <laughs> when I was watching him do it because he was just using his bare fingers to spread that, uh, that uh, seam sealer around. And I'm like, don't do that. Never, ever, ever just go straight bare skin with any kind of chemical try to avoid that as much as possible but he was just smearing it all over and then wiping it off on towels and smearing it again and wiping it off put some gloves on it's not going to hurt let the gloves take the abuse uh richard vogel i found that eating the raisins and washing them down with gin helps me yeah well the <laughs> yeah i'm sure it does <laughs> Um, uh, but yeah, give it a shot, give it a shot. And if it doesn't work, well, at least you have some gin. <laughs> um, what was another thing I was going to mention about the, oh, I did some more, I think I, I shared that I did some more adjusting on a rotisserie and I'm able to turn a lot easier, make it, make it move a lot easier. So I'm very happy with that. Um, uh, and that's, that's really where we're at. That's really where we're at. So uh, if anybody has any input or maybe if Robert wants to join us, he can, I can send him a link and we can find out what's going on with his world. But uh, I don't have a whole lot of direct, um, you know, stuff to, to talk about because it's just been just one of those weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me see here. Oops. Send that down the line. Okay. Um, okay. So Robert says, sure. Okay. So I'm, I sent you, I sent you an invite. We'll get you on. Now, what was something else? So somebody was asking about, I've been trying to post stuff on um, Facebook. People have been asking for subject matter on like windows and adjusting things. So I've shared some videos recently with those people. Oh, that's the other thing. Um, I re-edited my Dynacorn videos. Now I've been posting stuff on Patreon and I'm posting videos on there that are re-edits. Uh, of course, on Patreon, there's no commercials, none of that stuff. And I added some bonus material. I've been posting the latest Cobra Jet videos on there. But I did a re-edit because when I went back, and this is a this is a problem with YouTube too, is to, to make any revenue, they want like really long videos. And in my early stuff that I put out, I was only making videos that were five to seven minutes long. And those videos just really don't do anything. They're just there. So those videos I have currently on YouTube, they're going to be turned off. Those are going away. Um, I am releasing a, a re-edit of the Dynacorn. Uh, there's always two real videos and two little time-lapse videos. So I put all those together. I've already posted that on Patreon, but that's going to come back out on YouTube um, probably Wednesday. And I'm just trying to do what I can to keep people interested, obviously, and reshare some of that older, um, the older stuff. Because uh, some of it doesn't get any traction anymore. Like it'll just, it just doesn't get seen because nobody's either, they're not looking for that specifically or it's not getting promoted by YouTube. So I'm going to try to put more of those up and I'll probably do more of that moving forward. There's some videos that I've done like 
one, two, or three videos on a process. Uh, I know in the Jade section uh, playlist, there's some longer videos, but they were labeled one, two, and three. And like the first video, a lot of people looked at it, and then two and three didn't get you know really much interest. And I think the problem is people will find that and they don't they don't realize that there is a um, at the end of the videos there is a link to the next video in the series. In in almost all my videos, there's a link that takes you to the next video. So I'm gonna probably have to rework some of those as well and try to make sure that. Uh, Everything is, is getting caught up and, and shared the way it should be. Because uh, there's some good information back there. Even though those videos were shot with a little, you know, I had like a, a camera about this big. And I was trying to, you know, film with that while I was pointing at stuff, right? You know, that's, that's what really got everybody was um, pointing and talking. And for a long time, nobody knew what I looked like because I didn't put myself on there. But um, anyway, so I'm going to try to continue to re-edit some of that stuff. And again, some of it is going directly onto Patreon and some of it will end up staying on YouTube, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, looks like Robert has gone out to his shop. And so I'm going to bring Robert on. He looks like he's ready. Let's go. Okay. I'm here. No thunderstorms yet. They're, they're coming. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to get like, I want to say like three quarters of an inch tonight and another inch and a half, two inches tomorrow. And yeah. So, so it's just a delayed effect from the eclipse. Oh, okay. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The eclipse is going to destroy you. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's delayed, but no, we, we, we had, it, it was really good, really good here. We get the full eclipse. Yeah. It was about a minute and a half and it was just pitch black or not pitch black, but it was like, it was like eight yeah. thirty, nine o'clock at night for yeah. about a minute and a half or so. And well, we went to the zoo. So because we're, where we live, we're outside of, we're, we're too far North for where yeah. it was. And we, so we just was like, Hey, we got things that, that pass for the zoo. Let's go there. We got there. There's nobody there. It's great when we got yeah. there, <laughs> but uh, that was pretty cool. It was really pretty cool. But I, I was playing with, a, with my phone and doing the ISO settings. And this is like, let me try this and try that. And yeah. And the clouds were actually kind of cool. Cause you'd get just enough of a cloud over top, then you could put your sunglasses on and it would block enough and you could see it really good at that point without using the other little glasses for it. Yeah. Good. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. It yeah. Was pretty cool. Um, we have a question from CJ Hoyt. How are you on electric issues? 06 F350 keeps jumping from 8 to 14 volts. New alternator. Should I change the wires out that goes to the alternator plug? Um. I wouldn't do that just yet. I know Ford has an issue or have had issues with their connectors. So they do, they actually have it in their manual, something called the wiggle test. And it is checking the terminals and wiggling them and making sure they're all making contact. So you may want to go that route initially to make sure that the terminals are making contact. Um, but also if it's jumping from eight to 14 volts, where is that being registered at? Are you measuring it with a voltmeter? somewhere or is it just jumping on the gauge because that may be also come into play as well so yeah and, and well my thing is any anytime if, if it's on the gauge cluster itself i i just I full i just ignore that to start with and I, I go test the battery test the alternator because i don't care what brand it is gauges voltmeters in a gauge cluster there's so many connections between that thing and where you're going that yeah, yeah. Especially with GM and, and Ford did it too with the printed circuit boards and the gauges and the clusters. They plug on. They work great for the first couple of years when the, when the thing's new. But yeah, after that, he's saying it's, to go. it's doing it on the voltmeter. I, I would ch I would check the the battery and the alternator. Check it there. See what it's doing there. And then at that point, I'm going to assume that it's probably a bad connection between the the, the meter and you know and, and all of its stuff to get to the battery voltage. Okay, so there you go. I'm guessing he means the voltmeter on the dash, not the yeah, not that's the handheld that's, voltmeter. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, it could be wrong. Car guy Troy, hello all. What's up? Not much. Glad you're here. Uh, Richard, does anyone offer just the bottom portion of the rear 
torque box for the 65 to 66 Mustang? I don't think so. No. I think you have to buy that whole assembly. I'm guessing. I haven't seen those pieces separate. Now, um, yeah, I don't know if I've seen the rear portion. I'm going to say no, but I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. Oh, my. Oh, so uh, CJ. Hang on, I got to turn something off here. <laughs> okay. CJ says, uh, or Infidel says to CJ, check the power wire from the battery. Okay. On the on the alternator. Uh, Abe Godino. Hi, everyone. I just removed the cowl off of my 66 coupe. It wasn't leaking, but I wanted the next owner not to worry about it. What are your thoughts about using undercoating on the cowl? Um, you talking about on the inside or on the actual undercoating of the cowl like what i normally do is like the, when i did uh the cobra jet i sanded all that down all the um i didn't strip it but i sanded it down and i sprayed it with rust-oleum tough product it lasts um if you're doing the inside like that that's that's probably all you really need to do because the old cars the original cars didn't have any primer and they lasted quite some time before it all rusted out. Um, anything you add to that, like I put seam sealer around the towers, so that's taken care of, and then spray it with Rust-Oleum if you want. If you use um, an undercoating, it would have to be something that would get hard because I wouldn't use a rubberized undercoating because stuff will just hang on that and just kind of cling to it and just kind of collect in there and then it won't drain anyway. So you've got to be careful with how you uh, what you do there. Any thoughts on that, Robert? No, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. It's like I'm even thinking, even like a bed liner type of stuff, I worry that will be a little too rough and start yeah. kind of yeah, grabbing It's got to be dirt. smooth. Because you, yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, why I like could, in. Yeah. And I, so my thought is like, if you could do like, um, uh, uh, you know, like the bed liner stuff that we're familiar with, you know, the two part stuff, if you could do something like that and make it, you know, perfectly smooth i think that would be excellent because you'd have a nice you know a, a nice hard surface that would right. also be pretty slick if you could if you can make it slick and i'm not not entirely sure how you could do that offhand because right. just unless you mixed it up and, and brushed it on uh and most of that will have a rubber chunks in it too so you've got that issue i think you can get it without the rubber chunks but don't I, I don't take my word for it. I think you can for some reason. Yeah, I know that I did some of that material in my dune buggy, and it came with like the sand mm -hmm. stuff you could add to it. Um, I know the spray on stuff that I did, like the uh, the bed liner spray that I put on the mm -hmm. Bronco. It still had texture. I mean, mm -hmm. you can you can back up and make texture, but you can come in closer and lay it mm -hmm. in there. Um, but I, I think I think I'd rather go with a paint myself yeah and, and you know i'd almost think that it, you know along those lines there's a um there's a paint that they use like for uh for boats and stuff like that that uh it's a ppg product that they use like for the the traction areas and it's yeah. in a heavy duty paint and then you add the sand and you add the aggregate to it it's like something like that would probably be bulletproof but there again then we go back to you know what what, what always gets talked about it's like unless you're going to be driving this thing every day in the rain. Right. It, it's, you know, I, I think, I think just like you said, you know, the, the Rust-Oleum and if you, if you, if you're, if you're edgy on Rust-Oleum, put some hardener in it, put some acrylic yeah. enamel hardener in it and you can hard, and you can treat it just like that, like, uh, like, uh, tractor paints and things like that. Yeah. And, and it'll get nice and hard. It'll dry quickly. It, and Rust-Oleum is surprisingly good stuff. It really it is. is. It is. It it's, really it's is. For as cheap right as it is. Just right out of the can, a rattle can. I'm, I'm happy with it. So Yeah, and, and, and I've seen a number of guys do, you know, different different tests on different products and even do rust tests and scratch. And it's like, you know, for as cheap as Rust-Oleum is, it's just like it comes out near the top every time of those yeah. tests, even against really expensive stuff. So, you know, I don't know what it is, but it, you know, they <laughs> it's been around long enough that they've got something that works. And it, and it smells bad, too. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and it's uh, funny. But if you get the black stuff now, it's blue in the can. Okay, 
a friend of mine bought, he bought a quart of it. And he said, here, come look at this. He opened up for me and he, he said, look at that. And it was like royal blue. And I was like, and I said, that's blue. I said, no, when it, when it dries, it's black. Hmm. So they've done something different with their formulation. And, and it was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. as long as it works, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, Troy says, Robert, is that new insulation on the ceiling for your shop? I'm, I'm, I'm halfway done. I ran out of insulation and it gets to the point where it's hundred and because we don't have Menards here. I, I can rant about that left and right, but Menards at 70 something bucks a bundle, but I've got to get it here and I have Depot and Lowe's and it's a basically twice the price to buy a bundle of it. So I'm like, yeah, maybe I'll make a Menards trip or something and, or whatever, you know, yeah. I'd like to do the rest of it, but you know, insulation is a fortune these days for what it is. And I still need for what I can get just like, say just the rest of the ceiling and a little extra, I could buy everything to do all the walls, double it up and the ceiling from an arch for the same amount of money. Yeah, right. It's, it's a big difference, but it does make a difference. It, it, it does. Cause if you're at this end of the shop and say it's cold or warm or whatever, and I, it's even without running the mini split, you notice a difference and it's much quieter. It's like the other last week when it was raining, you know, here it wasn't so bad. You go to that end, it's noisy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's getting there. And talking about hose, air hose, that is a hose reel up there that I bought a long time ago. And I miss having one in the middle of the shop. And I finally was like, okay, I just got to get the thing off the floor. <laughs> I got it mounted up there. Yep. But when I was talking about our, my, on the pecs, I just ran a big loop around the shop. And then up here, I've got, on this end here, I've got a line that runs all the way up here. And that way, it'll run up, over, and down. And and because it's a loop, I only ran half inch. Well, you said, well, that's not a volume. It's not, half inch is not. But when you're running it in a loop, you're pulling from both sides of that loop. So you've got less, you have less okay. restriction on it because you're not just doing through one half inch line. You're pulling through two half inch lines. Okay, but is because it still one, in one half inch feed though from the front? On well, with the compressor can when the compressor feeds into it, you can do whatever size you want feeding into that line right there. So you could do, you know, half inch off the compressor. You could do three quarter, whatever. But the fact that you've got it's a long run, but you know, since I've cut it from one half inch to two, your resistance goes way way down. Okay, I see what you're saying, and right. and it and it works fine. I have yeah. no complaints, no complaints at all. And I use the compression stuff. Okay. Uh, Shannon says no on the, um, bed, uh, bed liner in the cowl. And Abe says inside is where mm -hmm. it's going. Uh, infidel says bed liner would pop off from the engine heat. That's uh, a possibility. Yeah. A possibility. And infidel, I would do paint have done it many times. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I think you, I think we've answered that question yeah. pretty well. Paint, paint. Uh, my, as far as I'm concerned, is anything you put there is going to be fine. It is. I mean, like we said, these cars back in the day, they mm -hmm. didn't have any primer anywhere in there, no. and it rotted out over the course of 20, 30 years, whatever. Oh yeah. Uh, of course, it mattered where it was, you know, driven. But mm -hmm. these cars, it, we're not going to see that kind of weather. Well, it's you know, it's like when I took my quarter panels off, and you know, inside there. Everything in there is bare steel. It was it was yeah. never coated with anything, yep. and and a lot of there were areas that still bare steel that were you know not even surface rust on it, yeah. Just because of where they were in there, you know, never had any surface rust on it. You know what's funny? Um, rust, uh, rust is a weird thing. Like if people will panic sometimes whenever they they'll have a little surface rust on the panel. Mm -hmm. And really, that is just the steel trying to protect itself, in a sense. Mm -hmm. It creates that rust, and it that's it. Now, mm -hmm. if it's sandwiched between something, or if there's other elements added, like salt or anything like that, mm -hmm. then it just sits there and eats away at it. It can't mm -hmm. get rid of it. But if it's just a dry surface rust, it really doesn't affect it much of anything. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've got sheet metal all over the place that has got that perfect patina on it. Yeah. And, and it would, you could let it sit for decades and it won't change. Right. Now, if it's out in the weather or if it has some other elements or making contact with it, or if there's some electrolysis or something that's mm -hmm. 
uh, feeding it. That was why mm-hmm. there was always a big b- deal on um, uh, batteries sitting on concrete, right? The, the story mm-hmm. is you set a battery on concrete and it'll draw the juice out of that battery. That's not true. Mm-hmm. What happened was you would have a, a, a path of leakage, mm-hmm. let's say, where the acid may have created a trail that went out of the case and went to the bottom of the battery. Now Mm -hmm. the electrons or whatever uh, have a a path of least resistance and can go outside the battery and then down to the concrete. So it wasn't the concrete that was causing that. It Mm -hmm. was a leakage that was allowing the concrete to interact with it. So that was always a, you know, we always like my dad always had to sit on a piece of wood and I get Mm -hmm. it. It worked. It did. But that was kind of where the mindset was. And, and, and dirt on the top of your battery will discharge your battery. Yeah. If that case has got dirt and gunk on the top, you know, just on the surface of it, that allows, you know, a slightly lower resistance path for the electricity to go from post to post. Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. You got storms? No, I, I think I have a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots and lots of squirrels around because my wife feeds them. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, we don't have many squirrels. I, yeah. I, I, I was I was working on the yard yesterday, went around the side, and the, our fence is not on the property line for some reason. And I walked around the corner, and I, I got the weed eat or something, and there's a possum headed towards me. And just the, I, I wish I recorded it because it was just like, he just, oh, I'm just doing my thing. He looks up and he's like, oh, you're in my way. And he's like, and they kind of sits there for a second. He's like, yeah, I'm going to turn around and go the other way. <laughs> just, just the, the, it was like a cartoon. Just the look on his face is like, yeah, yeah okay, I'll go. And he just turned around, walked the other way, because yeah. everybody was making noise. So he, he got woken up out of his spot. Yeah, it, but it was just so funny. He was just like, oh, I wasn't expecting you to be in my way. <laughs> yeah. Well, and possum are ones you want to keep around. That's for sure. Yeah, we we don't. Have, yeah, we've got those. Uh, fortunately, I haven't noticed any skunks lately. So. Yeah. Usually this time of year, you'll start smelling them. Yeah. You know, you'll smell them here and there. So, well, there's other things that smell a lot like skunk that I smell frequently when I go up into the Atlanta area. Not good. Anyway. So how's, how's the progress on the Mustang? Um, yeah, <laughs> it just stuff gets in the way. And, and, uh, my, the, the she hurt her back and I was going to, you know, she had to do was jump seating back from her mom's and 737, you know, everybody makes fun of it. Well, it has this little jump seat for two people. If you've ever bought a tent before, you know, you read on the package and it says, this is a two man tent. We all know what that really means is it's a one man tent. Yeah. Same goes for that seat. Well, because the way she has to sit and contort and she's holding herself up the whole flight and she ends yeah. up straining a couple muscles back there. And, you know, cause it's like, I needed her to wanted her to film some stuff. And it's like, I didn't want her to mess with it. And yeah, the, the, the part of the, uh, the, 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 what we were talking about before <laughs> the clip yeah. before that I sent you. Yeah. The part of that, that uh, I, I need a little bit of help because it's, Something's going to go flying. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know if you were working on anything else on that or if you were just. Uh, uh, I've been, I have been digging through stuff, trying to kind of figure out what I've got and where I'm at. And and I've got a bunch of little stuff that I've just got to get stripped and painted or primed and, and powder coated. I just need to get all that stuff. I'm trying to get it all together and just get all, you know, go through and get all that done at one time. Versus do a couple of these and then uh, I'm just try to get everything together, get set up, do it all at once and make it easy. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I did buy a, a toy over here. Harbor Freight had that 15% sale coupon yeah. thing. I was in there and I bought that gantry crane, the gantry, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I bought that a while back on clearance because that's how I like to buy things. Um, I bought that, sold my engine hoist. And I was like, well, I need the little hoist to go up on the, on here. Yeah. Well, it's in Harbor Freight and they had the 880 pound electric winch that mounts up there. Yeah. Yeah. It was $99 on sale. 
on clearance and I used the 15% off coupon and she bought me the little bracket for Christmas that goes onto it and onto the I beam. So it rolls back and forth. Yeah. So it's like, okay, now I can put that together. Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll throw it together and maybe make a video of that. I don't you know. You should. We'll, we'll see. But the, the annoying thing about those gantries and I'll make a point of this Harbor freight Northern both sell the winches and they sell the gantries. Neither one of them sell the bracket to mount the winch to the gantry. Neither okay. one of them sell that. That there's a there's a different bracket with rollers that that you yeah. have to buy. And Amazon is basically the only place you can find them, or somewhere else. And I'm like, come on, guys, you sell both parts, but you don't sell the part to put them together. Right. And yeah, just, that doesn't make sense. I know you can buy the you know the normal. Um, the trolley, you know, the trolley with just yeah, the loop yeah. on it and then hang that underneath and, and add, it just, it just looks kind of kludgy. Yeah. But this just is, you know, it's kludgy? a bracket with the wheels. Kludgy? Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. That's the word of the day. Kludgy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's talking about tile right there, which, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I got to go get grout. Other things you need to do. I, yeah. I got to get grout so I can go grout the, the, the floor in that, in the bathroom there. Okay. And then start working up the walls and never let anybody get you, let you buy pebble floor tile. Okay. N never. Okay. <laughs> Big square yeah. sheets are the way to go. All right. Uh, Dave Britton says it was weird. We never had any possums in Southern Ontario when I was growing up and now there are plenty. Yeah. Yeah. They're working their way up the, uh, mm -hmm. up there. Don says, honey, I'm here. Yeah for helping out Dave Tyson got ELE steering unit for 66 dang. I'm guessing electric electric. Yeah. Did you get it put in yet or you just bought it? That's a, that's a question. Yeah. Um, yeah and I, and I've got that one. I've got a, I've got a, that's one of the projects I do need to work on is I've got the, the steering unit and all that, you know, for out of a, was a Saturn or something? I think it was a Nissan actually. I think it was a Nissan. It wasn't because there's, there's like three, there's several you can use. Okay. And I think it's a Nissan one. The Toyota ones are, you can get to, uh, but I, I need to get that out. And I'm at a point where I can start figuring out how to bracket that thing into place. Yeah. Uh, my steering gear is not in bad shape. Um, What's the ratio on it though? It's the power steering gear. Okay. It's the, it's the tight ratio. Um, it, it moves really nice. It's actually, uh, it doesn't, there's not a huge amount of slop, but it, it needs to be a little tighter. You know, it's not, it's not sloppy like most of them are, you know, like they're really, really sloppy, yeah. but it just, it doesn't have as much resistance as I would like it to. It's, it's really too easy to turn. Okay. So I'll either, you know, do like Don, tear it apart and do that or take it down to San Antonio. And that's the guys where you can get the parts is in San Antonio, the, the ball bearings for inside or just take it to them and say, here, rebuild it and give it back to me. And then I'll use that. You do have to cut that shaft though. You know, cause that shaft is what, three and a half feet long. You do have to cut that shaft down and yeah. then do the, you know, the, the couplers and stuff on there, okay. which I'm, I'm okay with that because that gives you, if you, you know, depend on how way it lays, it lays out and you can put some U joints in there. It's like, so at least you have, you don't have a, a fixed spear in front of you anymore. Right. You don't, you don't at least it's in parts and pieces so it can crumple in some way. Right. So that, that's a benefit there. Um, I would probably do like the steering column that you did in, um, the, the car that shall not be named. Yeah. Uh, the GM steering column is what it is. Yeah. Uh, probably do one of those. And like just, an I did it or something. Yeah. Or just uh, the eBay special ones. Yeah. They're, it's a Saginaw column. I mean, okay. how, how, how do you mess that up really? Yeah. And so I might do one of those kind of things on there. Okay. And uh, I just got to figure out how short can I cut that thing? Cause it's gotta be pretty short when you yeah. put all that extra stuff under the dash. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Dave Tyson says $35. Now, I don't know if that's what he paid for. I'm, I'm assuming that's what, he, what it cost. Uh, I don't know what. He needs to give us more information, though. Tell us what he got and where he got it from. Uh, Gigum Garage, welcome. And what are you powder coating? Um, Probably talking about me. <laughs> oh, 
What are you powder coating? Me, I'll just be doing. Uh, I've got a lot of the smaller bra random brackets and stuff that I need to do. I'm I've been toying with an idea for doing uh, nuts and bolts and smaller parts and pieces instead of sitting there with a the gun and, and doing this. I've got a different idea, and I've, this is it's one of the things I've got to make it and build it and see if it works. And it's something I've not seen anybody else do because it probably doesn't work. So I'm not going to mention it, but it's something I've been kind of thinking of. And basically, it would be simple to the point where you just take it, you put it in, you pull it out, and then you bake it versus turning it. And Okay. So, yeah. so you're talking about taking like a bolt or a piece of bracket or something and submersing it into the powder sort of sort of sort of okay but but i would be able to do a whole assembly a whole bunch of them at once you said it just one at a time i could do it on one hanger but aren't those electrostatically they are and okay. it would be a metal hanger that all everything be mounted to but instead of instead of blowing it on there with the you know the the thing i have an idea for a totally different way of doing it so it's one of the things I'm just going to have to rig it up and try it and see if it works. Yeah. And if it does, somebody will steal the idea, sell it to industry and <laughs> well, <laughs> you know how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if it works, if, if it works, that means that all I've got to do is load the thing up, chink, chink, throw it in the oven and wait 10 minutes and, and it would be a piece of cake to do if it okay. works, if it works. But I don't have a really big oven to do big stuff anymore. So that's something at some point I do want to build a bigger oven again. I think you're losing me. Uh oh. Oh, you computer, what are you doing? Okay. Uh, hold on a second. I don't understand what's going on, why it's triggering my Wi Fi. And it should not be triggering my Wi Fi. Hold on. Let me see. I don't know if I can get it. it usually it, it does this for a moment and then it comes back when it does do it. So um, Robert's still there. Okay. So there. Now we're, we're back. I don't know why I, I did that. I didn't know if it was you or me. Well, it said it showed a little Wi Fi symbol, which it, it, it shouldn't even be able to turn on Wi Fi here because it's turned off. Um, well, this, okay, this so, computer I plan to get rid of pretty soon here, too. Which what's this that? thing is. I, I plan to get rid of this computer pretty soon because it's. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 still on dial up. <laughs> Pretty much, it, it 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 was it's it, yeah, yeah. Uh, so Dan uh, Don says Randy, the steering box guy, is moving locations, inventory in transit. Okay, uh, I yeah, I haven't paid attention to them, but so yeah, I'll have to figure see where they're going to. I'm not in any hurry, but so I'm not familiar with Randy, the steering box guy. I guess yeah, it's uh they're in San Antonio, and uh, their big thing they do is rebuilding these uh the steering oh, boxes okay. for for these mustangs and they're one one of the more common ones popular ones out there for doing it and they do a good job okay they do a good job at it uh gigam says looking at krc power steering 14 to 1 K that sounds high K krc who is krc i don't know i don't know who krc is but 14 to 1 that's I, that sounds really high, really fast. I, I can't remember what the what the ratios are. Don will. I mean, my my. I'm just yeah. It's not ringing a bell right now, but I know I have the okay Meyer. Okay, uh, Meyer. but I have the the power steering version. Some reason I don't know how. That's just the way this car was. There was a lot of weird things on it. So I've got the the, the quicker version, which is okay. nice. Uh, Michael says, I got a black oxide kit. I did all the bolt for the C4. I was totally amazed how nice they came out. Better than new. Okay. All right. So, Dave Tyson, ELE power unit, complete wire harness from mm -hmm. Saturn Mechanic. There you go. Mm -hmm. Can't beat that. And then Gigum says, 16 to 1. Okay. So, that's your, are you saying the power steering unit is 16 to 1? Is that what we're... I, I think I think the manual is sixteen and the power is fourteen. Oh, okay. I think is what I could be wrong. I just don't remember. Okay. I, I, I don't know either. <laughs> I, I, I know like on, on the GM ones like the was it the one L E Camaros and stuff like that were like twelve and a half to one. 
something like that. Okay. Um, they were like 12 to one. And then you could get anywhere up to, I think it was between 12 and the standard ones were about 16 on those two. So. Okay. Yeah. And 12 to one was pretty quick. And then they had really heavy torsion rods. So it was really hard to turn. A lot okay. of people like that for some reason. Gigam says the manual. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know what the ratio is because whenever I did the CSR, no, no, not uh, the Borgeson conversion mm -hmm. on Jade, um, I don't remember what the numbers were. I don't remember even reading what the numbers were. I just know it was power steering. Mm -hmm. But the um, uh, the thing I had to do on that was change the uh, pitman arm. Mm -hmm. I had to take it off of my manual box and it fit the, the power steering. Mm -hmm. So I know there was some, I think there was some uh, going back in time when I was racing the 65 Chevelle, um, it had a manual box in it and mm. uh, it was, the ratio was insane. It was just like one, two, three, four, and then the wheels would be like, ee, 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 yeah. Ee, ee. So like when we were racing, um, as we, people comment, it looked like we were swatting flies. <laughs> they're trying to turn the wheel. Yep. But it's, <laughs> it's like, turn the wheel. <laughs> give me a smaller steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I ended up taking, uh, and this was a no, no, just, just saying I took the, the, uh, the pitman arm and I shortened it. <laughs> I cut that thing off. I cut out about an inch or so and I shortened that thing up, made a world of difference. And it didn't it break. Some, it creates some other issues, but yeah. Well, it didn't break until I got in a wreck. <laughs> when somebody else re wrecked yeah. and I, I got entangled in with them. And then it was yeah. just like, uh oh, I don't have any steering anymore. <laughs> now, now what, what what did you think of that Borgeson? And the reason I ask is because I I know a lot of these you'll see a lot of the guys in the forums and and there's a lot of people that are on both sides, they either love them or hate them on those things. Um, and, and I'm not, and I'm not sure they're some of the complaints I hear against them. I'm just like, I'm not so sure. You know, I, just, I well, I, I, I haven't really followed up with any, you know, complaints or anything. Now here's the thing. I've only put about a hundred miles on Jade since I rebuilt that car. Um, so I really don't have a, a vast yeah. timeline to tell you one way or the other. Uh, I don't have any complaints. The only issue I had at all was, one of the lines going from the, I think it was a pressure line from the pump to the box. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, I think it was a pressure line, whatever line it might've been a return. I don't remember, but it was very close to the headers. Mm. And so I had to change that so that it gave more, you know, more clearance mm. away from the headers. That's the only thing. Um, okay. the only thing I really had to mess with, but it's, it works fine. It, it connected fine. It wasn't, you know, yeah. it's not that, that, not that complicated. Well, and, and there are electric power steering pumps out there in the world. They, those do exist. Volvo has some, some yeah. of other that you can take and retrofit and do things like that. Yeah. Oh, so Don says Borgeson is 14 to one. Okay. So, yeah, I had no idea offhand, but I mean, it, it's, it does what I needed to. So at this point, I'm not worried about adding something to it. Now, mm -hmm. I, I was considering um, buying the electric steering kit that Charles had bought. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm past that point. I'm mm -hmm. not going to go that route. If I do any modifications, I'll probably go back to a standard type of power steering like the Borgeson. Mm -hmm. um, just, just doesn't make any sense to me to add in a high dollar mm -hmm. fancy unit that I don't need. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be racing or anything. No. And, and, and it's like, but the, I'm doing the electric, but I'm doing it with junkyard parts. So yeah, yeah I, I, the, the kits, are, I have nothing against the kits, but I look at the kits and I'm like, okay, it's the, it's the junkyard parts and a little bit of extra stuff. It's like, I could do, I, that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, but I'm the type that I like to do things myself. Yeah, you know, there might be a kid out there to do it, and that's fine. I just, I'm the type that, you know, if if I can get the stuff and do it myself, I enjoy that more than just buying a kit and using that most of the time. 
I, I, I get that. I know for me, um, I, I, I don't want to have to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> I don't no, want to go hunting for stuff. Now, now there are times that for certain things I'm like, Oh no, I do want the kit. There are yeah. certain things that, you know, if, you know, if you're in a hurry and you got to get it done, whatever, Oh, I want the kit just to done. Well, it's kind of like a lot of people converted over to the Granada power brakes. Mm-hmm. Um, that's fine. That's all well and good. But where do you find a Granada these days? You don't. I, so then you have to, yeah. what do I need to do to get that going? Yeah. And, and it's, it's like, you know what? This guy has a kit with everything in it. Mm-hmm. Boom. Let me just get it done. You know? Yeah. And, and, and in my part of the world, you know, people think, oh, the South, you know, you guys should have lots of old cars there. No. Junkyards, get rid of them. They're gone. Yeah. They were crushed decades ago. Yep. A few yards will have a few th- you know, old things here and there, but they're far and few between anymore. Uh, the last, you know, like of, of what we're talking about, our Mustangs here that I saw in yards that were a normal thing to see in yards, they all exited. The, they were all crushed in mid to late 90s and they were just they were all gone. Yeah. That after that, they're just they're gone. There's a yard or two that will have something pop in like that. And, and unfortunately, I've seen a few. I'll go onto their website and I'll look at what's on there. And I'm looking at this car that's like, why is this car in the junkyard? Whatever it may be, because somebody just called up the phone number and junkyard came and picked it up. And I'm, <laughs> you know, yeah. Perfectly restorable car of whatever it may be. And it's just sad what ends up there. Well, I'll have to... Um... I'm going to, I'm going to have to email myself a couple of pictures to show you something that bothers me that uh, I'll, I'll post it up here in a little bit. I have to get it and send it to myself, but um, I'm with you on the, uh, the just discouraging to see something show mm-hmm. up in the junkyard. I know I've gone to the, you pull it yard up here mm-hmm. and I forget what I, I may have sent you some pictures of something that I found in that you pull it yard. I'm like, What? Why is yeah, this thing here? You know, yeah, and, and 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 but a northerner will come here and go to our junkyards, and they'll see cars in the junkyard, and there's like, and they'll look at it and say, "Why is this here? There's no rust," and by no rust, I don't mean northerners' idea of no rust. I mean no surface rust whatsoever yeah, anywhere. Yeah. And, and it, you look underneath, and it looks like brand new. And people say, "What is it doing in a junkyard?" And I said, "Tell you, well, for one, the interior, all that plastic stuff in the interior, it's gone." Yeah. It's all rotted and, and it's gone. All the plastic on the outside, it's gone. The rubber's gone. The drivetrain doesn't hold up well here because of the heat. That stuff gets abused really badly. So basically, the only thing that survives really well is that metal shell. Right. If you want to come down here and get a metal shell, that's great. But you're going to have to take all the rest of your parts and put it into that shell and put it back on the road. And, you know, I would be okay with that. I would. Mm-hmm. Because you know you just don't find this stuff, yeah. Um, like we're saying with the uh, in the, in that condition, mm-hmm. it's like you know people wanting truck beds and and truck cabs and stuff like that. Go to the junkyard; you can get you a nice rust free truck cab, not a problem. Yep, it's it's not it's not a problem to get them at all. I know um, when I did the uh, GMC and I cut up that cab and got rid of it. Oh yeah. There were people like, what are you doing? We cannot find those, you yeah. know. Um, and so we're like, me, I can't sell it. Yeah. Uh, let's get caught up on some of the conversation on the side. Roger says, it was awful trying to drive the stock car with a manual box, but I wasn't much better at it with the Z28 box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot we put the Z28 box in it. Uh, Don says, if I were installing Borgeson, I think I'd run hard lines outside the apron. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah, my, that's like a lot of my wiring will be outside of the apron. Yeah, it'll be through the wheel well, but I don't want it inside the engine compartment for. And you know, so, well, but 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 what if it gets hit by? I'm not worried about it. Well, you know, Again, here's the thing. There was um, a guy that uh, I think Call of George. He has an Instagram page, and he did AC on his '68. Mm-hmm. He ran the lines outside of the apron, and it I've looked so that. much cleaner. I, I've seen that done. Yeah, it, it it is just like when you see that, it's like, yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah, that's the way to do it. It just it cleans up the engine compartment so much. Um, Michael Paglarini says newer Jeeps have electric power steering pumps. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gigum says I'm your Edgeberry looking for a kit. Okay, 
And also junkyard hunting days are over. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, especially when you were, were like, well, you could take the Granada. It's like, well, you can't even find a Granada. I cannot remember the last time I've seen one. It's been a very long time. Um, let's see. Dave Tyson says, yes, we do. I'm not sure where we're at on that. Oh, and he also said, put nuts and bolts in bleach overnight, dry, and paint. Hmm. Okay. Um, missed that earlier. No, no, but whatever you do, don't, you know, you do the, oh, hydrochloric acid, and muriatic acid. People think, oh, yeah, that's great for removing rust. Yes, it is. Don't do it in your shop. No. Do not do it in your shop. You do it in your shop. Anything that is bare steel or bare iron in your shop will be rusty tomorrow. Yeah. I've seen it happen before. Uh, he was saying about the the part the cars, he said, except in South Texas, rust, rust, rust. Yeah, so it's like cars and it, it, it's like, you know, the PT cruiser. There there's no rust whatsoever. Yeah. It looks like a brand new car underneath and, and we're getting rid of it. So Yeah. 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 But yeah, you go down the coast, it's yeah, you're by salt water. So yeah. Um, Jack W late to the party. Good evening, Barry from a shaky New Jersey. Yeah. They've had the, uh, mm -hmm. some minor e eclipse, uh, earthquakes, right? I think is what they were. They were yeah. It was just early. It was just ahead of time. Yeah. I got the gutter. Oh, they didn't time it out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a couple little earthquakes. I don't know five, six, seven years ago or something right around, right before Christmas. Yeah. And it was, and bed is like, it was like something went like a, you took a rod and went under a carpet kind of thing. And it was, and it was like, what was, that was an earthquake. <laughs> well, you know, it's, what's funny about Georgia is if you go up into Atlanta, you have Stone Mountain mm -hmm. and they have the giant mural on the side or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's all granite. Mm -hmm. One, yeah, one big chunk. Yeah. Apparently, that's just the top of the granite mountain that is underneath Georgia. That's what it all, everything under Georgia mm -hmm. is, goes under, on top of this giant granite, mm -hmm. um, you know, mountain. But yeah, I, I think there was an earthquake on the north side a couple of years back and nothing here. <laughs> We're yeah, we had, I think the, the biggest one we had was like a, 2.8 3.0 oh we had yeah. like three of them and it was they were centered like about a mile and a half north of us oh and it was but it was all and but we're on sand so a little earthquake's a big deal yeah i get you that know, so you know i know a lot of people that you know ended up with crooked doors and everything but it was all it was all because of uh well a lot of people complain about it. gas and oil and, yep. and fracking. It's like, but my thing is like small price to pay to have electricity and stay warm in the winter. Um, <laughs> let's see. Dawn says before the Betsy project, I considered buying a Dynacorn fastback shell and transfer all of Betsy's parts over. Yeah. That's a possibility, but I yeah. think you did better off with Betsy the way you are. Yeah. Betsy turned out really good. Uh, but, but Betsy has been fighting him every yeah. step of the way. <laughs> Um, Dave Tyson said, us in Northland in the South Gunkyard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Diggum says, Marble Falls, Texas near Austin, mm -hmm. used granite for state capital. Yep. Yeah. And and most of the uh, the county courthouses around Texas are all a granite of some sort. Um, some of it's pretty pretty stuff. Uh, some of the pink stuff looks pretty good on some of them. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you some pictures. Uh oh, and this bothers me. It's not a car, mm -hmm. but it bothers me that it's sitting in a scrap heap. Okay. Um, and I like antique stuff. I like old, but let mm -hmm. me show you this. So. Oh okay. yeah. 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 That is a Springfield mower made between, I think, uh, 50, either 56 and 62 or 58 and 62. Mm -hmm. And if you'll notice, it's got like a handlebar sticking out of the hood. That's the steering. Um, it's missing the seat. And here's a little closer picture of the mm -hmm. so Springfield. Uh, it also, if you look at the first picture, it's got a shifter for, I guess, forward and reverse. And then something else. I don't know what to, I didn't get close enough to look at the shifter deal to see what all it did. But that hurts me. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it, to be honest, it, you know, if if somebody had that locally and said, "Hey, would you want? Would you take that?" Be like, that would be a cool project. I, I'm so tempted to go back to to the place and just see if, if what they want for it. I mean, um, other than the, and, and the seat, you can get a seat. Yeah, you can get the seat. You and, know. And, yeah, but and, the rest and, of it looks like it's there. So the, the, then the next question is, what do you do with it? Right. What do you do with it? I I hate to see it get scrapped, yeah. but I I you know, I don't have time. Yeah, it would be it would, like I said. It would be a neat project to build and do, and then it's but then it's like when you're done with it, yeah. I, what do you okay, do? With it was it? cool, and it's like somebody would buy it though. You would hope if that's something. If you had that restored, you bring it to a swap meet, you bring it to paid or something like here, yeah. it would sell in a heartbeat. Just to the same people that buy oh, the yeah. signs and. You well, know, you know, kind of stuff. we have um, locally here, there's uh, twice a year, they do a tractor show. Mm -hmm. I know if that thing was all, you know, even the way it is, if I put mm -hmm. a seat on it and it ran and I took it to the tractor show, I could probably get a couple hundred bucks out of it pretty easily. Yeah. Um, and, but that, see, that's back in the days when things had styling because they were styling it for the times. And yeah, like I said, you know, this, the steering and the, the, the curved hood and the, and yeah. the shifter, it's, it's reminiscent of like a, um, um, the, uh, the, the Schwinn shifter, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. And, and, and the, well, those things were underpowered. Most of the, it's a Briggs and Stratton and, eh, or no, yeah. no, sorry. That is uh that's going to be a, that's not a Briggs of that year era that, Briggs wouldn't have uh, had yeah, I looked them up. Part. I actually did some research on them, and um, there's some forums out there that uh, follow Springfield's whatever. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like, oh, why is this sitting here? Yeah, it drives me crazy. And it's like, well, the other thing is, I can just put a, a new engine on it. Oh, I wouldn't even want to do that. Yeah, but but if, if, if for some reason, if for some reason he had to, yeah, and I, I want those things were that's not but a, a five or eight horsepower engine. Right. That's all it is. A five horsepower is all it is. Yeah. But it's all it needs. True. Because what that would be ideal for is take it to the swap meets, tow a little trailer, just drive it around. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and that would look cool. As is. Yeah. Just put tires on it, leave yeah. it as is, and just drive it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, put a seat on it. Yeah. Uh, Dwight Douglas, good evening. Speaking of junkyards, there's one in Wisconsin called Baxter's Classic Cars that has hundreds of old Mustangs, even fastbacks. Wow. Okay. Well, send me a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, like I said, there's, I've, we talked about it before. There's that yard that's north of us that's at an old drag strip and it's got a lot of stuff there and they do sell some other, other parts and pieces. Um, I've not bought anything there. I, I've heard they are a little pricey, but yeah. uh, they do have a, a large inventory of cars and oddball taillights for really weird stuff that will never be reproduced and stuff like that. Yeah. Because yeah, some of that stuff is just, you don't have a choice. It's, nobody's ever going to make a taillight for a you know, 53 whatever, you know, oddball car that nobody, you know, nobody's ever going to restore usually, you know, you know of, of, of the 50 that still exist. Yeah. Kind of thing. Well, that's like, um, I, I had posted something on my Facebook page about, uh, I forget what year model it was, a 50, mid 50s Ford. Mm -hmm. And it was a four door. And the guy had cut the back of the car off. Mm -hmm. He narrowed it in and put a seat in the middle of it, made a recline, you know, like a, a chair mm -hmm. out of it. And I, I kind of commented, I said, this looks like easy money because he was trying to sell it for like $4,500. Uh -huh. Now, I want to do stuff like that, but I don't want to cut up an original car. I would rather get the panels, whether they be Mustang or Camaro or whatever, and just build it to make it look like one of those old bodies. Mm -hmm. Make it patina look to it, whatever. Put a seat in it, you know. But and and this place I was talking about actually they sell they um everyone saw the post a list of different sheet metal that's brand new sheet metal that's shipping damaged stuff. Yeah. And my thought would be is, is, you know, there's that certain company we don't like their, their stuff. And, uh, you know, at, at Summit and other places sell it. It's like, hey, can I uh, let's go in and buy the, all the damaged stuff? It's hard. I don't care. It's not yeah. going on a car. Yeah. You know, or that stuff. Or you could patina it, put it on the wall. You know, yeah. get, get a fender, a quarter, and a door skin and well, you, you, know, you can do stuff you know, on the wall and stuff like that. 
what's funny, not that I would ever have room, room, but I've got all the sheet metal from this Cobra jet. <laughs> I've got the quarter panels that are not usable. Really? I've got the doors that are not usable. I've got the, uh -huh. at least one fender that's probably not usable. I could easily display the whole side of that 69 Cobra jet. How about outside? I don't know that I want to do that. I thought about that. Like I put it up on the, on my garage in the front. Yeah, kind of like the guys that you see. They'll have the whole their whole big building covered in signs and stuff yeah. like that. You know, I may I may have to look at look at that a little <laughs> harder because that would be really cool on that back wall. Uh -huh. hang, put the whole body up there, uh, and you know flatten yeah. it out as much as yeah, I can. Right, right. Right there behind the behind the lift, right up behind above the lift. behind the lift there, yeah. Um, but I have to I have to put my Camaro hood somewhere though. That's yeah. the only thing. It's big and bulky. Is that Camaro hood? Um, yeah, but yeah. That 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 could work. Mm -hmm. That could work. I'd have to make some a little filler piece to make the roof because I don't mm -hmm. have, and I'd have to make an A pillar. Oh, I have the A pillar. I have the, the I have the windshield post. Well, I, it, I've got enough. I could do the whole side of the car. Well, and even even if you don't. You can fake it and it'll look fine. Oh yeah, it, yeah. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be perfect. Just something up there. Yeah. Of, of of the rough shape would be fine. Okay, I need <laughs> I need I need more time to do these sort of things. <laughs> uh, Dwight Douglas says Resurrection Auto has a walkthrough video on YouTube. Hmm. Okay. Is that the name? Uh, so you Is have Baxter's and Resurrection. Yeah, it's a shame. You know, I, I look back over the every time I think about the junkyard and mm -hmm. uh, all the stuff that just got yeah, tossed or destroyed, you know, run over with a tank. Uh, <laughs> well, at the time you didn't think anything of it. Well, actually as, a, as when I was young, I did. I, I was like, Ooh. it, it be, not so much that um, maybe I had a vision of what could be, uh -huh. but I was attached to all those cars mm -hmm. just because they were like my friends growing up. You're, you're there. They're, you're you, well, you're the, you see them every day and it's like, Oh yeah. yeah. It's over here and, it's over here. and, yeah, and then when one's like, missing, it's like, Oh, where, where did where that one go? go? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so that's, yeah. uh, but not, nothing I can do about it. Long yeah. Gone. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's like I, I had a, a friend of mine years ago and, Bill Grunland. He was he was on our Monte Carlo board at the time, back when back when we had it was mess you know email message groups and stuff like that where it was just you know email generated mailing list. He lived out in, in uh, was it Arizona at the time, and he 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 would he had a junkyard, so yeah. you know he would had a junkyard years ago, and he had actually ended up moving to, and I'm going to get this wrong, but Kansas or somewhere in that part of the world to be closer to family. He moved his junkyard. He bought a school. He bought a closed high school from the city because, you know, they it was a small town and they didn't need the high school anymore. And he so he bought a high school and filled up the gym and the classrooms and all this stuff with all of his junkyard stuff. Really? But but anyway, he had this but he had his junkyard and he said in the 80s, he said, he said, I would have cowl induction hoods for Chevelle's. I had he said I had all this stuff. I couldn't sell it. Yeah. He said, I couldn't sell it. It wasn't worth a penny back then. So nobody was because of the, you know, the oil prices. He yeah. said nobody was driving those cars. He said it, it just, you know, if somebody came in and offered him, you know, a low ball offer on stuff, he'd sell it because it, nobody wanted the stuff for yeah. so long. Yep. And a lot of it got scrapped because, you know, there was that little time period there where people just thought, okay, this is the way life is going to be forever. And let's just get rid of it. And instead of, you know, hey, you know, things do change. Yeah. You know, but it was just, it was sad to hear all the stuff that, you know, he talked about was just, it went away and got, you know, scrapped or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dave says, uh, Dave Britton, very few were anything like me. I used to play in the junkyard with my siblings. It used to have a blast in a certain car and hurt to see it go. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that was our normal. Um, just, you, you know, I don't know. It became, I hate to say like friends, but they were, it's like. Because when like we would always make references, like if my brother said, "Hey, I need you to go pull blah blah blah," right? Mm -hmm. And I could tell you specifically, he would say, "Go, you know, go by the the purple Chevelle, and it's three three rows behind that, 
It's mm-hmm. next to that Impala convertible with the missing the right front fender. Okay, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, and, and your mind just got that map in your mind. It's like, boop, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. And, you know, for, I'm, uh, that map is still there, and it's, mm-hmm. but it's also locked in to about 1990 is where all the, everything after that is, mm-hmm. is just gone because I moved yeah. away completely. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you could sit there and, you know, he would say, oh, you know, up by the hearse, there's a blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, I know where the hearse is. Mm-hmm. And I know where that is. Yep, yeah, got it. You know, well, but that's like, you know, going to yards is remember when they were all you go to any yard and most of the cars were stacked two and three high. Yeah. So and, and anything you need, it was always in the car in the top. Yeah. So and, and back then you had to climb up there to get the part you wanted. Yeah. You had to climb up into the second or third car and you had to climb up there and go get the parts you wanted. Yep. Sometimes you got lucky and it was on the second car. And then because it was up there, I just reach up there, do right. it, and take it off. So no, we never did that. We never stacked anything like that. Uh, we just didn't have a lift to do that sort of thing. Yeah. But that reminds me of a story, not necessarily a junkyard story, but reminds me of, of an event. Okay. Years ago, I put a car in a demolition derby. It was a 82 Impala. Mm-hmm. Um, afterwards, I scrapped the car, took it to a scrap metal place that mm-hmm. took in all kinds of metal. Mm-hmm. I went there and I was, I was, angry (laughs) (laughs) i went there and there was a um i want to say it was an 80 or 81 maybe 82 malibu wagon Uh uh-huh dark blue i don't know if i don't know if those had a wood grain effect on them or not i don't remember if they came as an option on those um i don't remember if those had a sticker or not i don't remember seeing one but this thing was rust free. It was perfect. Mm. It had the nicer wheels on it. Mm-hmm. It had the, I looked at the interior was spotless and perfect. I was like upset mm-hmm. because it was on the bottom of three car, two cars piled on top of it. Mm. And I'm thinking, why did somebody bring this here? Yeah. What, did they, what was the point of, of dragging this to the scrap metal place to make 200 bucks off of it? Yeah. Um, and the interior probably a working. running, driving car. And if it wasn't, it probably would have been pretty easy to make it. Yeah, you know, uh, but I was just like, because oh, I love those I love those Malibu wagons. I, 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 this one, I, I, I always wanted one of those, and I wanted to take one and then put, like, uh, the, the Choo Choo Customs, the Monte Carlo SS type yeah. front end yeah. on it. Or or do like the guys have done with uh, the Grand National front end. Yeah. And you now the El Caminos I've seen done like that. When you see that, it's like, why didn't GM sell that? If yep. GM had sold that with the Grand National interior and doors and front end, that would have sold like hotcakes. I mean, that well, would have been like, oh yeah, I got to have one of those because it was just it looked it was the best looking one they ever did. Yeah. It really was. Well, I happen to know where there is a I think it's a seventy nine. Uh. Malibu wagon, mm-hmm. V8 with a factory four-speed in it. Mm. You talk about an oddball. Yeah. Any of those, any of those cars that had a four-speed were hard to find. Be- but well, because kind of a wagon with a four-speed. Yeah, because well, most of them were were just the the cars and made into the Iraqi taxis, which ended up they didn't end up going where they're supposed to go. Right. Yeah, and most of them ended up in in Mexico, and yep. uh, yeah, those were. But the interior out of a wagon today is worth a small fortune. Oh, I, because that stuff thing, is unavailable. This thing was just, it was absolutely perfect. And I was so distraught because I was like, mm-hmm. you can't, it was at a point where you really couldn't save it now. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's already been crushed underneath everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Dawn says, same thing my dad went through after discharge from Marines, could have bought brand new P51 Mustangs for $1,500 each. He disliked civilian flying, though. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine that having, uh, buying 10 P 51 Mustangs and just putting them in a hangar somewhere and just let them sit. I tell you one one of the neatest stories about uh, it'll be off, but it's, it's aircraft related, but yeah. And and I was watching, this was a a thing it's been years ago and some, they were restoring a P 51. Yeah. Or or, yeah. uh, No, I'm sorry. uh, A P 38. Yep. Restoring a P 38. And I, and I don't remember who it was doing it, but they were telling the story about this and said, yeah, we needed a, a, a yoke for the P-38. They were restoring. 
and needed a yoke for it. And it got, you know, you know how that stuff bounces around all the people in the know. And they say, oh, yeah, Bob's got one out in the desert. Go out to his place or, you know, talk to him. He's out in the desert. He's got hangers all over the place. He's, he's you know, he'd be the one that has them. They call up the guy and says, oh, yeah, I got one. He says, well, what do you want for it? How much you want for it? It's like, oh, I don't want any money for it. He said, I want a right such as such, whatever early right engine of some sort. I don't care what condition it is. I just want an early right engine of some sort. And they said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can scrounge it up and, you know, do the, one of those mash episodes, you know, right. And, you know, trade this, trade that. If they finally got the engine, went to the guy, went to the guy's hangar and they got, he said, okay, here's the engine. He says, uh, where's our yoke at? I said, oh, you see uh, that pile of pallets over in the corner of the building over there? Said so there's a whole there's a whole there's pallets full of brand new yokes over there. Just go grab one. <laughs> and they're and they're looking at the guy like, you made us go find this rare engine, and you have a whole pile of them. He says, yeah, but you needed the yoke. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, but that but that kind of stuff happens. Similar things happen all the time. Yep. And, and it's amazing, you know, an, an inventory like that, no matter what it may be. It's, there's piles of stuff out there in somebody's warehouse somewhere, whatever it is. Well, um, I could tell you from my experience, a friend of ours, um, they owned a coal mine. They had a head money. Mm -hmm. They had uh, tractors that they did tractor pulls with. Okay. okay. So they had the, um, uh, I lost it. What's the name of that? What's the engine that was in those, in the Mustangs? Oh, was, uh, uh, um, you know what I'm Merlin, talking about? Merlin. The big V12. The, the Rolls Royce Merlin. No. Was it Merlin or was it? Oh, crap. Mine's going blank now. Yeah. My, I, I, I have a camera pointed at me, so yeah. uh, my, 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 my memory is over here right now. Yeah. Uh, um, anyway, uh, I know I, it, it, it just came to my mind. Um, ah. Uh, Anyway, it was it was a it was a the aircraft engines that they had, and they mm -hmm. were like, I want to say they were V twelves. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Don, it is the Merlin. Yes, yeah, what Don was saying. Yeah. Well, not it's not. Or, it was Allison. That's what it was. Oh, okay, okay. okay I know so it was Allison, yep, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it had these Allison V twelve aircraft engines, and they had built tractors with those on. They were mm -hmm. the first to. I don't know if they were the first to do the Allison V12s, mm -hmm. uh, but they had one tractor that was supercharged and another one that was turbocharged. Okay. They built the first one where they put two of those side by side. Mm -hmm. They couldn't keep a drive shaft in this thing. It had so much torque. It was just oh, yeah. twisting the drive shaft. Yeah. So they went for years racing these. And my, my buddy was actually uh, rookie of the year in 1985 on mm -hmm. the circuit. They, they toured the circuit around the country. So they ended up shutting down and not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. I think those tractors may still be around after all these years, mm -hmm. but they had a, they had, I was there the day that the semi truck backed into their shop, slapped full of these things. Mm. They took a forklift and they stacked these things up in the back mm -hmm. of their shop. They were like four high and like two rows deep. And mm -hmm. I mean, it was, 16 or 18, 20 of these aircraft engines. Yeah. So years later, my brother was at a junkyard and he was looking to buy some parts or something. And he looks over and he sees this odd cylinder head. Mm -hmm. And he's like, that looks, that doesn't look right. <laughs> and he said, where did you get that from? Oh, so-and-so brought it. He brought me a bunch of that stuff. Somebody broke into their old barn where they had stored all this stuff. Uh -huh. Stole those heads, stole all these aluminum parts, and mm. put all these aircraft engine parts. Yeah, took them to the scrap metal place and sold them for scrap, oh. not even knowing what they had in their hands. See, and they just they just they just got rid of them. Yeah, and um, it was a long yeah ordeal. The guy got arrested and all this stuff, but it was like you idiots. You know, you don't know what you're dealing with. Had, had they known what it what was and what it was really worth, right? Yeah, yeah, they could have really made some money off of it. But. Now, 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 here is here's the here's the trivia question: Who really burnt, who built the Merlin engine? 
Who built the Rolls Royce Merlin? Oh, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell I, you. I'll just let somebody. I, I, Don, I know. Don will know. Well, but, you know, back in back in the day, even Studebaker made engines mm-hmm. for aircraft. Yep. But yep. Uh, that's Here a good go. question. So yep. let me admit Dave on here. Brantford, Ontario has a huge, had a huge pile of surplus aircraft out of the war. My grandpa purchased a AVRO 652 Anson for the parts and they were selling oh, Harvard's wow. for 500 bucks. They were pushing oh. all kinds of planes into a pile for scrap with a loader. Give me a Corsair. I, I'd take a Corsair in a heartbeat. Yeah. That, one of my favorite, favorite airplanes is the Corsair. Uh, Don says, and the yoke's on you talking about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we went through uh, Allison. Thank you, Roger. Yeah. Donna said Merlin. Yes. Yeah. Um, Michael, my dad restored Douglas Dauntless dive bomber at the Quonset Point Air Museum. Okay, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So we have, yeah. oh, Packard. Yep. Is the answer for, uh, which is technically Studebaker yep. at some point. Yeah. At some yeah. point. The, after they the, merged. You know, and, and that was in. Uh, if, if you ever, if you ever haven't seen it, uh, there's a series on uh, one of the PBS type series. Um, uh, give me a second. Give me a second. It was about manufacturing World War II. And somebody's okay. going to remember the name of it right now, but there's a whole series of different ones. And they talk about that part of it. Um, but it's, it, it's really interesting because they talk about uh, different, you know, what Ford did at that time, what GM did at that time. And um, oh, I'm, Mine is, I just cannot remember the name of it right now. A War Factories is what okay. it's called. Really good series. And there's a lot of really interesting things about how, who did what. And, you know, the fact that, you know, there were GM and Ford vehicles on yeah. the wrong side of the lines because of. Yeah, the war. Yeah. Effect. But it was, it's, there's some really interesting stuff in there, especially about some of the European companies, about how, yeah. how they worked. Really interesting. Okay. I, it's getting time to go. Yep. I got to get something to eat. And we've been at the, I've been at it for an hour and 42 minutes. You've been on here for a while too. So I yeah. appreciate you coming in yep. and uh, helping and out with this. Ne- next time this black and white stuff, and I'll probably try to comb my hair first. I wasn't really planning on, but oh, yeah, yeah, right. I'll, I'll swap computers. So there's a, the picture looks like it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Let's see. Dawn says, I hate thieves. Calvin on YouTube had his truck, enclosed trailer and his race Studebaker inside this morning really sucks oh man oh yeah i i, I we got a we got man. a purpose for being th- thieves you can just you know come right about here they won't steal again yep yep all right i'll let's, let you go robert again you. thanks for being here okay so that's going to be uh we're going to close out tonight uh, been at it for an hour and 42 minutes which is awesome had some great uh conversations and some subject matter come up and I want to thank you all for being here. So, uh, oh, sorry. And Don says stolen. Yeah, that's not cool at all. Okay. So um, I'll be back next Monday, which will be the 15th. And I hope everybody has a good week and get some work done on your cars. So until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. <laughs>